We saw in Anita and Tex's garden how beautifully they achieved getting different layers in the garden. And the layers, of course, had something to look at, whether it was a pergola or a bench or a little pathway that led off somewhere. And that's exactly what we're going to show you today. How do you get that? And how do you take your garden just to that next level so that it doesn't just look like a pallet where you can simply view the whole garden in 360? Because if that's the case, then there's something wrong. So today we're going to show you how to get it right in a townhouse garden, just like this. It's got the right shape, so we're going to create something along these lines. Bit of pathway going up, leading you off somewhere, a little bench in the back where you can sit and relax. Of course we need something to create a bit of shade because you can't sit in the blazing hot sun. So we need something that's going to get a bit taller. A few plants in the, in the sides just to balance it out and something to draw you in. First up we're going to show you how to make your own crazy pavers. We're going to use them right here to make our little pathway. I've got Garth and Andrew standing by getting a few bits together so I'm off to find them. Right, Tanya, what are we doing today? Well, do you know what's going on here, first of all? No, I don't, but it looks pretty crazy. Uh, it looks quite, I'm going to be quite simple too, so. Yeah, it's very, very simple. Um, this is crazy paving, and this is what they're going to turn out looking like. Bits like this once we take them out. So those are ones that we made a bit earlier. And now what we're going to do is take it, like, rewind a whole lot of steps and go right from the beginning and show you just how easy it is to put together. So all we need is a board flat board, make sure it's level as possible, and we've got some of these planks, um, which you can just get from your local hardware store. Depending on how thick you want them, obviously that's going to be the height of what you're going to be needing. And just to give you a basic example, we're just going to create a square with these. Um, Garth, so just some ordinary wood screws, huh? That's all, Tanya. Yeah. yeah, and let's just pop them in. And you know, here there are no rules, absolutely no rules. You can just literally do whatever shape you want, but it's really cool if you're going to work off a board and use that because then you get a basic shape. Use standard wood screws to fix the planks to the board. Start with the outside edge planks first to make the framework for the pavers. This has got to be the hardest slash simplest part, I assume. <laughs> it is, because all we're going to do is, as, as you want them to be as big and or as small, is you're literally going to take your bits of plank and put them across and create any shape that you want. So yeah, that guy, that oaky can go over there. That looks good. As long as you've got a neat edge on the inside, remember to create to it. That that's all that's important. So possibly over here, what we'd want to do is imagine if the, the mortar is going to go in here. You, you're not going to want that. So we're going to need to trim this guy off so that he can fit flush against here. And but that's literally the hardest part. Use dividing planks inside your frame to create any crazy shape you want. Cut and shape the end of the planks so that they fit together like jigsaw pieces. This will prevent unsightly bulges at the corners of the pavers. Okay, uh, what other shape should we go with? Possibly across there, that would be quite cool. Maybe like that. Yeah, here we go. Let's make another mark. Okay, in you go, Batman. Lovely. Looks good, that was quick and easy. So it all makes sense now. Kind of like as big as you want to go, as small as you want to go. So this is the basic idea. Go wild, literally go wild as much as you need. And you can now get to see that what we're going to end up with here is some really cool pavers, any size you want. What I love about this basic frame is that you've always got a straight edge. And when you're creating a pathway, it's always nice to have one straight edge on either side because that just gives the formality of it. So let's go and get our mixture ready to bang into this guy. I've been paying attention after all these weeks. Oh, well, or we should hope so. I have, I have. <laughs> We're doing paving, so I'm assuming you're going to need quite a strong mix. Absolutely. So I think a 2 to one mixture would be worthwhile to go for. Mm -hmm. uh, we're obviously going to use one bucket of sand, one bucket of stone, and half a bag of, or half a uh, bucket of cement. So basically, folks, Andrew is 100% correct. To make it simple, what we're using is one bucket of river sand, one bucket of stone. We're using a very small builder's stone because the pavers aren't very thick, so you don't want to be working with large bits of stone that are going to get in the way. This makes a really strong mixture, which is just what we're looking for. And then, of course, half a bucket of PPC cement. <laughs> oh, 
Lovely. I'll give you my pink spade, Garth. Okay. Well mixed. Nicely mixed, yes. Good job. Okay, in we go. Say when. Andrew. When. Say when. When, 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 that's fine. When. When. Oh, when. just check it. <laughs> Always remember to add water carefully so you are able to achieve the right mixture consistency. Okay, Tanya, initial panic section has looked really rough and really coarse. Mm -hmm. I think, though, as I remember, I want you to give it a pat down. See, that's it. It does smooth off quite for sure, a bit. For sure. And you'll notice that with it, there is quite a lot of stone, and that really gives it the immense strength that we need. But as you say, as soon as you start smoothing it off, you're going to get that look that we all want, which is the finish of the pavers. So from now, into the bucket, and let's go and get it started. What we're going to do now is just use a bit of oil mixed with water as the releasing agent in here. I've got a bit mixed in here. Andrew, maybe you want to give me a hand and just uh, whack it all in here. Give it a good liberal painting. Yeah. Okay. In we go, guys. After oiling the wooden frame and planks, Pour the concrete mixture into the frame and use a trowel to get the mixture into every nook and cranny. The idea is just to work it in as much as you can into the corners to avoid any air pockets, get it stuck in. And then of course, it's always advisable just to use the mallet, give it a good few bangs. And as you're doing those taps, so you're getting rid of more of the air bubbles, which are on the sides. There we go. Use a trowel to smooth and flatten the surface of the pavers. Fill up each individual shape one by one with a concrete mixture. This will help you use exactly the right amount of mixture for each paver, cutting down on waste and lots of messy cleaning up afterwards. Right, we're just finishing off here now, using the mallet, tapping on the edges just to get rid of any air pockets. And Garth, you've got the sponge there and you're just gonna neaten off the edges. Good, yeah. You know, there are two ways to this. This could be the top of your pavers, or the bottom side can be the top. And um, if you really want a neat look, then I'd suggest that you use the top, because you can get your edges really nice and cool by using the sponge and neatening it off really well. Andrew. Right, I'm back. What have oh. you got? Oh, I've got a bag of nuts. Since we are doing some crazy paving, mm -hmm. I had a crazy idea. Yeah. What if we were to sprinkle something on the top here to give it a bit of a texture, a fun, funky look? For sure. So I found this bag of old macadamia nut shells, and yeah. I was wondering if we could sprinkle on the top. That would do. That would do. In fact, I saw a, a walkway in a wine estate, and the walkway was done entirely of macadamia nuts, just pushed into, wow. into the concrete mixture. And then another one, they actually used peach pips as well, and it looked so hot. Wow. Fantastic. And a nice texture. So if you've got a sloping area, you use the peach pips because it's got a nice tread on it. Okay, well, let's give it a bash. Well, I don't know if you're going to sprinkle on or... No, let's take them. them I think way. Let's take them and Upside we literally down. just... You, one you just push them, them in. Yeah. Because these are cracked in half already. So, yeah, just go wild. The other thing that you could do is if you're wanting a bit of a texture on the top is to take a dry block brush and literally just create some strokes and there you have a whole new finish and that will dry looking really cool. Yes, I think so too. That'll be nice. Very nice. Of course another alternative, you could just take some very fine gravel, sprinkle the fine gravel on top here and just pat it down and then you're going to have almost an exposed aggregate to paver. You can really get creative with the surface finish of your pavers by adding things like stones, shells, seed pods, gravel, or even mosaic tiles to create the final look you want. I quite dig it just like this. If you like that, you can always do names, signatures, you can do anything that you want. So, you see, it's really creative. Go wild. All we do now, leave it, let it dry for a couple of days. Right, guys, this is the area. We've got this big boy here, <clears throat> which is really in the wrong place. This is what I call escaped indoor plants. <laughs> the problem is, these guys, when they escape, 
um, because it's a fig and we know figs get to 20, 30 meters. They've got really an invasive root system. It'll start taking up this fiber concrete wall and you can see it once used to be plaited. Um, but now it's just kind of left to its own devices. The verdict is take it out and preferably put it into a pot and that's where it should be as an, as an outdoor container plant. These roses really need to go into another spot because they're looking very, very sad. Certainly not good specimens. So they're going to go and we're going to leave those formiums. They're looking gorgeous. I mean, they really are stunning, nice form plants. And once we've taken this out, you're just going to see how it's going to open it up here where we're going to end up putting our little pathway down here. So, Freddy, out he comes. Today, the team will be doing some crazy paving using the concrete pavers, but first, they need to clear the garden. Right, Tanya, what are we going to do with this guy? Right, well, I like the group of three, um, three formiums. Formiums, they're a New Zealand plant, come from New Zealand. Um, beautiful foliage, you get them in many different colours, and apricots, bright reds, yellows, so, and as a form plant, they are beautiful. Form plant, meaning it's got beautiful structure, architectural lines, and, you know, when you walk into a garden, your eye immediately goes to these guys because they've just got these really classic lines. I really don't want to take them up, but what I would like to do is maybe lift the sky up and divide it because they grow like grasses, Okay. you know, so they, um, they make clumps, and the clump just gets bigger and bigger. So you don't need to be scared about lifting it up and actually dividing it. We just open it up in the middle. Okay. Okay, now you pull that way and I'm going to pull this way. Olay. Pass that one here, Garth. Let's have a look. You see, that's perfect. That was quite successful. Exactly, it's really easy. Yeah. And now, if you really wanted to, like make lots of plants, I mean, you see, they just come apart almost like a grass. You've literally got in this one clump, one, two, three, about 12 plants. Okay. Um, but what it does happen, of course, is that you're going to set the plant back because you're going to wait a whole lot of years for this little guy to make a bunch like this. So if you don't have to, don't divide it too much. With the garden cleared, it's time to unbox the pavers. Right, gentlemen, all we've got to do now is take this apart. And um, the screws aren't in very deep into the, the bottom board, so that should do it. There we go, just like that. Out they come. And you could probably even use that. And then, take a look here. Once you've got that, take the little trowel, wedge it in, open it up a bit, and voila! Ha <laughs> Comes out pretty easy. How cool is that? Crazy paving. Tanya, how long do we leave this to dry again for? This one's been down for approximately a week, but if we're having a blistering sunny day like today, um, two to three days would be more than enough. Okay. Um, in fact, one day even, if it's in really, really hot conditions, one day is more than enough, because it's not very thick as well. Okay. Now it goes firm quickly. Do you need to spray some water over it and stuff like it that? It is advisable that as it's curing, so as it's drying, that you do sprinkle a little bit of water over every now and then. If you don't have time to do that or if you're at work, just put a bit of plastic over it, a bit of black plastic, and that almost creates a little central greenhouse all on its own. So it takes care of that. When removing the pavers, start with the outer planks and remember to work carefully to avoid damage to the pavers. Okay, we still got all these pieces. Mm -hmm. Sort of remember where they went. We can screw them back in, make another batch. Exactly. Once you've got your basic mould, you can make as many as you want. So don't trash it, don't throw it away, because you can always use it for another time when you want to make some more. Okay, let's get these guys into the garden because that's where we really show how cool these guys look. Okay, guys, we've got our little pathway. We can see it's going through here, right off the edge of the lawn. What we're going to do now is just put down some weed guard. Because we've got quite a soft base, we don't even need to put down river sand. But I mean, if you're gardening and it was kind of all rocky and really awful, then you would put down a bit of river sand, then put the weed guard on top, and then use just put the pavers basically on top of that. And the weed guard, of course, stops any weeds from coming through and um, does help with a bit of drainage as well. So. Let's get this guy down. That's the one. Perfecto. With the weed guard in place and the pavers ready, it's crazy paving time. 
Okay, Tanya, we've got two quietly different contrasts on surface finish here. Mm -hmm. What are we going to go for? I kind of like this one. Yeah, I do too, and it's got a nice texture as well, nice firm grip. Um, and it's more consistent on that side than it is on the other side. So, so now there's no rules, hey? Crazy paving time. Let's do it. Where you get to play, remember if we've only done one board, one board is not going to be enough when you think about it practically for this. But the trick is that's where you start spacing them. So your spaces then create your length. Um, so let's just go wild, guys. Let's just play around, see what works. Crazy paving's a lot of fun, so the whole family can join in. Remember though, with crazy paving, patience is the order of the day. So the crazy paving is in and he is looking severely hot. Probably like as hot as the day that we're experiencing today. Couple of rules as you're putting it down. Use your outer edge first. This is your straight edge. Put those ones down first, it then makes it much easier. Um, I got a very good tip from our photographer who said that it's like building a jigsaw puzzle and it's exactly that. You've got to do the outer edges first and then you start with the inside and that really makes it much, much easier. We're going to be using a peanut shell as the inside and of course, like anything, stones like shells have an amazing ability to jump out into the garden. And if you've got children around the garden or dogs, well then it's just even happens quicker. So what we are going to do is use some log edging just around the edge of our crazy paving to hold it all together. Um, we've already measured and cut it and what we're going to do is, you got those ready there, Garth? Yes, they're both ready. Okay, we're just going to make a little trench. Andrew, maybe you can just do a little trench on that end and then um, we're just going to pop them in. The trench needs to be deep enough to hold the poles. Always use CCA treated poles for the edging. The team finishes off the crazy paving by adding macadamia nutshells in the spaces between the pavers and then they add more plants to frame the pathway. Finishing touches have been done, the macadamia nutshells are in, the edging and it's looking just beautiful. Let's just recap quickly on the plants that we used. Remember we took the formium, that New Zealand plant, we divided it, balanced it on the side. It looks awesome. And in time, these guys are going to get a bit taller, thicken out and really just fill up the garden. We've used the Durantashina's gold, these golden blobs over here, and we're going to keep those in ball shapes. So you've got the tallness of the formiums and then the roundness of those Duranta balls. The little white guys in between, that's called Scaviola. And if you notice and look very carefully at their flowers, they've got little fan-shaped flowers. They flower almost all year round. You get them in a beautiful blue and a really new one on the market is a yellow. It's stunning. So you're going to have this mat of white, golden balls coming out of them and wow, out of it, these beautiful red towers looking stunning. But with all pathways that you have, of course you need something to sit on. Every garden path needs something, um, whether it's a trellis or a bench or a pot. So I'm waiting for my two happy helpers to bring along my garden bench. Beautiful, gorgeous. Hmm. Well, are you too comfortable? Very comfortable. I am. I'm just missing a cold drink. Maybe our waitress could bring us one. It'll be a nice cough. Would you do this again? I actually would. This was uh, really cool. It's not that crazy, but it looks cool and funky. Uh, it's easy to do, quick and effortless. Yeah, pity about the 38 degrees that we had to work in. But <laughs> Garth, are you, are you delirious yet? Ooh, very close to it. <laughs> Until next week, do take care and happy gardening.